y maravilloso hablar más de un lenguaje. En general. En general. Very soon, Great Aunt Linda is going to die. I know this because she's shown me how to care for her good china. Told me where she keeps her grandma's wedding ring and put the pink slip to Uncle Willie's Buick in my name. Just in case, she says. She now speaks kindly of Conchita and Louie, past enemies who did her wrong. Hi everyone. Today on Punto de Interés, we have a very special show for you. We will be dedicating the show to a very intellectual and witty woman who redefined culture. And today, though she is not here with us, we have people in her life to help us remember her, we have her husband, Antonio. We have actress, Naomi. We have Julio, the filmmaker. Hi, everybody, how are hey. you? Hello, hi. Thanks, Naomi. Okay. Thank, you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So thank you so much for joining us today. I wanted to let everyone know about this project, a three-minute short film that Julio did on Michelle Cerros on one of her poems. Um, Julio. Yes. Can you educate us a little on how this project came about? So um, I've been doing projects with the with different folks in in, in this Ventura County for with film and video for like over 15 years, mm -hmm. and Michelle Cerros was like a big influence on us. You know, uh, back at a time when there was very little like a voice for uh, Latinos in pop culture. Uh -huh. So she kind of like started defining what the modern modern living in in Ventura County specifically, but even like Southwest living for for Latinos. It was like at a time when uh, alternative rock and uh, just the whole identity of what it was to be. Um, possibly you could be like bicultural, but sometimes it didn't mean that you either spoke Spanish or you spoke English. It could be like, you know, you were basically almost kind of like ostracized, ostracized or, or alienated. Uh -huh. But she started creating that voice for us. And that was like something that really, really like, you know, when I was younger, it really, really influenced me. And so she was like almost like a cultural icon slash older sister. Okay. And so many of us as filmmakers, as musicians, like uh, in Ventura County, when she would be in town, she would like, you know, come around, we'd go to her book readings. And even uh, the folks that help you here, Mr. Phil Taggart, I remember he was also did a few of these readings where she was there. Mm -hmm. And she became, you know, world, world known because of her writings. But who could speak more about that would be Antonio, who you know knew her like in a, in nobody more, else. In a more yeah. intimate manner. Yeah. Uh, Antonio, how, how did you and Michelle meet? Oh, at the, we met in 2010 at my restaurant in Berkeley. She actually walked in. Uh-huh. Um, and I hadn't read any of her books. You didn't know who she was? I did know who she was because I was a freshman and she was a senior at the same high school. Oh, Years okay. ago. And okay. you know, Freshmen know the senior girls, so, um, <laughs> but she didn't know who I was, and I recognized her and asked her out on a date, and the rest was kind of history. It just it it was perfect timing. Beautiful. Perfect timing. Good, yeah. good. And as a poet, as a writer, who was she? If you can bring mm, us in right. in a little bit to to uh, who, give us a taste of who she was. Uh, eclectic, I would say. Um, All-encompassing, very disciplined with her writing, mm -hmm. very uh, knowledgeable, mm -hmm. but also very giving, I would say. Uh, very, very helpful to anybody, not only who she thought needed it, but who would ask her, okay. do you have a tip, do you have a lead, do you have, what's your process kind of thing. She's very open, very genuine, very... Um, involved in the community, loved, loved Oxnard. Mm. It was just, that was, there was so much to write about. There was so much material. Um, she, she still had uh, some unpublished stories as well. So. Okay. 
Okay. Thank yeah, you. beautiful, beautiful song. Okay. I, I, I um, after I saw the short film, yeah. it definitely came across. Yes, yes, Julio did a great job, especially yes. with the actors like Naomi. Yes. Just, it was powerful. I uh, actually, I cried when I saw it because it's just the way everything, I, I was explaining to Julio, there was certain props in the, in the short mm -hmm. that really helped her. Uh, for example, there's a Time Magazine that they use. Uh -huh. She collected Time Magazines. Okay. And I don't think Julio even knew that. Really? You, know, you she didn't was, know she that? She was very into a lot of the props. So yeah. there was just so much that came together. And when I saw it, I was just like, wow, that's powerful. Beautiful. It was, it was great. That's beautiful. And Julio, how did Noemi come into the, well, let me oh. ask, let me ask Noemi. Yeah. When did you come into the project and what role did you play? Well, I came um, into the project uh, when, of course, uh, I met um, Julio at a mixer uh -huh. for uh, Cabrillo Economics Development. Uh -huh. And um, he told me about the poem, and I read it, and I felt that I could relate to it as an Hispanic woman, mm -hmm. and also knowing how important family is to to our raza, to our yeah. Mexicano yeah. raza, it's vital. I mean, yeah. that's our world. We have a very strong bond. And I could read that in her writings, and that really inspired me, and I said, this is what I want to do. Okay, okay. Uh, tell a little bit, uh, share with the viewers a little bit about the poem. poem what is the yeah. story of the poem? Yeah, so for the viewers, uh, first of all, I mean, I want to acknowledge that uh, she did pass away in 2015. Yeah. So that's a mm -hmm. big thing is, um, I remember us going to her funeral like mm -hmm. three years ago, and to tell you the truth, it was like shocking. Like she passed away from cancer, like nobody mm -hmm. expected it to happen. And we slowly saw like online, like her kind of like sharing her stories, but it was like, it was still unreal. Mm -hmm. And then when she did pass away, I tell you like, you know, everybody kind of like felt like, like we didn't know how to deal with it. Okay. You know, it was like she was gone and it was like, you know, it was hard to take. And I'm sure it was a lot harder for Antonio. But at the same time, like our, and our thoughts were like, well, we need to like, you know, keep her, her spirit alive at the same time. Mm -hmm. You know, like so many different people were influenced by her books. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were just hearing the other day we were at Alma Rose Center. Um, it's like a cultural center in Oxnard or in Mukwainimi. They were doing a book, like readings mm -hmm. of, of different influential poems. And they wrote, th they read the same poem that we, we use, which is uh, it's Cielo or Bust. Mm -hmm. Cielo. Yeah. yeah. And so the poem itself, like uh, that's the other thing is us as Latinos, we, we tend to like really acknowledge like the afterlife or, you know, the specifically even Dia de los Muertos, mm -hmm. uh, which is like a type of like ancestor worship or acknowledging, you know, when we pass away. Mm -hmm. And so um, we wanted kind of like to go with the theme, that theme, and then the, the poem is all about a young Michelle Cerro's realizing that her aunt, her great aunt, is getting close to that age, mm -hmm. that she's passing away. Another, another good thing about that story is it connects the generations, because it's like the younger generations recognizing that the older generations mm -hmm. are like crucial to their growth. Yes. And I think that's something that us as Latinos, like we really, really try to like connect with, with all our different relatives that way. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, you need to go visit your tia mm -hmm. because no one's visiting her anymore because yeah. their kids grew up or whatever. Yeah. Or, or you have that other uh, uncle that, you know, maybe your dad mm -hmm. wasn't in your life, but he played that, ex that dad that wasn't there. Mm -hmm. um, so then in this story, we're acknowledging that. Also, um, as a film, we never see these kind of roles either. I wanted to show relations between you know, parents, you know, yeah. and, and, and younger generations and how they affect each other and how important they are. When I met uh, Naomi, mm -hmm. she looked like she could have been someone out of Michelle Cerro's stories, mm -hmm. you know, completely. Mm -hmm. And then also I have to acknowledge like the whole team that put this together. I think, I mean, even you were part of that, the Sight and Sound Film Festival that mm -hmm. started, um, what was it, in August? It, it, we it, had a big gallery. Preview right? party, yes. You want to tell them a little bit about that? Yeah, so the Sight and Sound yeah. is a uh, film festival that's going to happen in 2019, mm -hmm. but we had a preview party this August, August to 2018, and um, one of the organizers, and we, this is what we want. We want local and um, other talent to put their, to, to bring their stories and share them with us. And in this case, it's a short piece, yeah. but it is so strong. Yeah. It is so strong, mm -hmm. and it's because it's her poem, it tells such a, a, f a quick 
and strong story that when I saw it on, in a visual form, I, I did cry. Yeah. I did cry it, because it connected all of those things that I'm feeling and many other right. Latinos are feeling, but we didn't know how to put it in words. We know people are passing away. We're all getting older. You just don't know. And we know about, we celebrate the other Los Muertos, but to put it in words and then right. add visuals to it, you right. really, really kind of brought it home. The other thing, so once again, the Sight and Sound Festival got so many different talented people together. Yes. So like, I mean, you know, I, I'm, I'm humbled by the fact that I was able to help put this together, but you know how it is. It's yes. like the camera people. We had, you know, Ar Ar Aurelio, we mm -hmm. had Francisco, mm -hmm. we had Rebecca who's here in the, um, in the studio. Yeah. Like she did so much research over at Channel Islands University looking through all of Michelle Cerro's mm -hmm. uh, belongings that have all been collected over at Channel Islands University, mm -hmm. which I believe they're good planning to have an exhibit also coming in coming the upcoming up. years. So okay. you could totally, or if you're seeing this, maybe this this already happened. Who knows? We don't <laughs> one know or yet. the other. Time, time is irrelevant in TV <laughs> time, right? Yeah, sometimes on this one it is. Yeah. Um, but if it's out enough, they can go online and... and yeah, they could probably go to the Sight and Sound Fest, uh, Film Festival Festivals. website mm -hmm. and get some more information. Mm -hmm. Also, we'll probably be posting maybe on Michelle Cerro's Facebook. Yes. Uh, okay, yes. cool. Okay. Everything's accessible now. Awesome, you. So awesome. All of the things are with Cal State Channel Islands with the... Any, any kind of information, they can go to the Facebook. And they can be directed from there okay. as far as where to uh, access all the information. Okay, and good. And are they starting, uh, I'm sorry, but you're start, they're starting uh, some kind of a fellowship or for uh, her? I believe it's a scholarship okay. in, in her name for the Chicano Studies Department. Of? The Cal State Channel Islands. Channel uh, Islands. So everything's Cal State Channel Islands. That's where she wanted her... Okay. Her diaries, her all of her personal belongings to be donated to. Okay. For our future writers, for future directors, mm -hmm. for anybody that wanted access to figure out her process, mm -hmm. right? How mm -hmm. she went about things, and it's very fascinating. If once they get it set up, I think people will really get a, a really good window mm -hmm. into her process, which. Mm -hmm. Being married to an author can be <laughs> a bit stressful. <laughs> But now, looking back, I, it's totally a gift. Mm -hmm. It was a gift that she had. Mm -hmm. yeah. And even with the, the title, the Cielo or Bust, she played around with the bilingualism. Mm -hmm. uh, she wasn't bilingual, but she understood the importance of it and was definitely a big champion for all Spanish immersion, any mm -hmm. second language mm -hmm. uh, acquisition. Yeah. So I think that was a great talent that she had. To be able to play with the stories, the language, in a way that was real mm -hmm. as an Oxnard native, right? Mm -hmm. Because uh, you say Oxnard, and you're like, what is it? Yeah. It, it's, well, it's a place, right? Yes. And But so much, it's a place rich of culture that kind of gets passed over. Right, exactly. Yeah. And she did not want to make that happen. She wanted to put Oxnard on the map, mm -hmm. and I believe she accomplished that. And then with the help of future generations, uh, there was another uh, author that also mentioned her in one of his short story books that recently came out. I, mean, I forget his name. But Is it Martin Gonzalez? Martin Gonzalez, yeah. yes, yes. He, yeah. he wrote a really good piece on her as well. Okay. Why we don't hear about these authors, why we don't hear about these directors, mm -hmm. why mm -hmm. they're not included in the canon or they're not included mm -hmm. in, in universities, mm -hmm. not just in California, but all over the United States. Why? Why, how do we get the word out? How do we keep that, that momentum, that knowledge mm -hmm. spread to other, to other future people. generations? Well, definitely, it, being from the independent filmmaking world, we need the support. There's marketing support we don't have, correct? Mm -hmm. right. That other big budgets, big companies do have. However, you essentially are supporting Michelle by bringing her, her work to life she had to go through the trenches. She had to build herself. Yeah. You know, she didn't have that right. backbone. No. But if we then we turn around and filmmakers like yourself go ahead and support her and bring her up, then you're going to start this trend, right? Mm -hmm. So you guys are the hub of that. You're starting this trend of let's support each other. Let's not this happen to us where just because we don't have marketing budgets and we don't have a marketing team, that doesn't mean that we should fade away. Right. Yeah, we We're have always to hustling. Yes. Yeah. 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 You know, she sold books out of her trunk. Yeah. She would Did go to the bookstores and wow. have a trunk full of books right there, <laughs> ready to sign. Right? Yeah. And that's the way we've always been. That's the way 
zine we culture. Do it. Yeah. yeah, lack of resources is definitely yeah. a barrier, you yeah. know, for um, especially Hispanics, mm -hmm. you know, because mm -hmm. we're um, not represented in the media. Mm -hmm. as we should be because we are a majority in California so yeah there it is yeah and, and that's why we do these shows to you know bring you in and show what mm -hmm. you're working what you're doing how ultimately we're supporting each other we don't want to be crabs mm -hmm. in a bucket and pulling each other down we can't you know we can't do that there's too many of us we need to help each other out right. yeah. be yeah. more united yeah um, and I wanted to ask you Naomi you know what does this project mean to you now that you're part of it you know, you get to show it to your family, to your nieces, daughters, grandchildren. Oh, it enlightened me, and I have a, more of a reality check on how me being a mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, I see the big influence that we are to our mm -hmm. children, to our relatives. Mm -hmm. We need to really be more connected with them, mm -hmm. um, show them a lot of um, who we are as Mexicanos, our traditions, our uh, culture, yeah. uh, what we're about. Uh, a lot of times we overlook it because we live you know, in this American society and we're here, mm -hmm. even though we are Mexicanos, but we're born here and raised here, mm -hmm. so we have a lot of the influences of the American culture. Mm -hmm. but we were raised up by um, Mexican families, so we have, yeah. uh, you know, the language. We might not speak it fluently because we didn't go to school. We weren't educated in Mexico. We're mm -hmm. educated here. We're, at one time, we weren't be able to um, speak Spanish in classrooms. That's right. So, mm -hmm. you know, we spoke it at home with our families, and we spoke it how they knew how to speak it mm -hmm. to, with us. Sometimes it's not as... Um, I like to say it's ranchero because we didn't, yeah, you know, some exactly. of us didn't learn it in mm -hmm. school. Some of us just learned the Spanish because it's passed on, right? So yeah. that, I have no qualms about saying that, you know, but that's how we learned it. That's how it came about. Yes, and it's not going to sound appropriate sometimes or proper sometimes, mm -hmm. but it's still our language and how we learned it, right? And we have to help yeah. each other. Mm -hmm. Like you're saying, now you get to you get to see that difference. You know, oh, okay, this is there's Spanish taught in school and then there's Spanish I learned. Now you make the choice of how you want your grandkids, your daughters, right? Yes, to Come be up raised up and, and to continue with, um, like I said, not just the language, the traditions, mm -hmm. everything. So, And Michelle still, I noticed in her writings, because I didn't know her, but when I saw you know, her uh, artifacts and mm -hmm. her belongings, I said, gee, I feel like I know her, you know, mm -hmm. because sh you could see she uh, really held um, her, her roots. Mm. She mm -hmm. really uh, treasured them. She, very she had everything, very she had everything saved and everything just immaculately organized. And I said, oh my God, oh, this, yeah. this woman. I said, I, 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 I already know how I could feel her. I said, I Beautiful. Feel her right away. And, and you made a point, you're talking about where Latinos who are Mexican-American, uh, other, you know, Latino-Americans, you grow up with these stigmas of, well, you know, you're not Mexican enough, you're not American enough, mm -hmm. and you got to see the behind the scenes of all of this. How was that present in her life? It was a constant thing. Uh, she was always working on a story. Uh, months before she passed, she was working on something for Huffington Post. Mm -hmm and was trying to bring awareness, you know, not only to Oxner, but at this point, a national platform, yeah. you know, like Huffington Post. So these were all, they were constantly, we'd, we'd have conversations about that, you know, at the dinner table or mm -hmm. whatever, but it was, it was a forefront, women's issues, Chicano issues, immigrant issues, uh, accessibility, mm -hmm. right? Having worked on the George Lopez show, she saw firsthand what it was like to be a woman mm -hmm. in a man's world. Mm. And she quit after the first year because she wasn't getting her voice heard. You know, and how many of us have that, that, that. I don't know what to call it, but I know what you're right? saying, where, where you just, you feel like you're not in the right place and you're not right. being understood. The money doesn't matter. The fame doesn't exactly. matter. Exactly. At it's the end of the day. Your artistic, your artistic gift mm -hmm. is being shut down. Mm -hmm. What do you do? do you sit in it and 
take it, right? Which some artists do. And yeah. she did give props to those that stayed in the industry yeah. for that long mm -hmm. and eventually broke through, mm -hmm. right? For the next generation to come up mm -hmm. and kind of peek through the, the broken glass, right? Mm -hmm. So she sacrificed a lot, but she understood, she totally understood why she was doing it. It almost feels that she, she didn't have time to wait no. and sit there, no. right. you know, because I feel when you're, when you're an artist at that level, when you're so in tune with your gift and you're so aware of what you're supposed to be do doing, you're also slightly aware of, do you have the time or not? Correct. And that's one of the reasons why she moved to New York. Mm. That whole, uh, the way the industry works on that end of the States is very cut and dry, you're mm -hmm. here to work or you're not here to work. Mm -hmm. You know, she understood that. Mm -hmm. And she was able to fluidly go back here to the West Coast mm -hmm. and be able to relax for a little bit Good. and get back in it. And that was her balance. That's how she kept sane in an insane industry. You know? yes. Just understanding your worth mm -hmm. and understanding where you want to go. You know, and helping others up. Maybe it wasn't in front of the TV, but behind the scenes she was constantly helping others mm -hmm. to get where they went where they wanted to go where they needed to go yeah. with the soul with soul action of accepting our gift and and sharing with the world i mean right. that's huge in itself to helping people because it lets us believe even if we come from another country even if we have different roots right i can still do i can still make a dent somehow yeah. absolutely you have to believe yeah. that you're going to do it and so she, he, you know, she had to fight through that mm -hmm. because we all, I'm sure you know as well, Naomi, you presented with something, even if it's a project, you still struggle. You have to go, well, you know, is it worth my time? Yeah. Is it worth, not money monetarily, but will it do anything for anyone? That some of us that are artists, that's, you know, I don't know about you, Julio, if, what's that drive? What drives you when you pick something? Yeah. And and that that was something with this project. It was it was that. I mean, even even with f like film projects, I was a history and Chicano studies major at UCLA, mm -hmm. and so everything always like content always has to have like some kind of vitality, some kind of meaning. Yeah. So because you know Michelle had just passed away, you know her, we we had talked at times about doing short films about her projects. Like it just seemed like the right timing. And it just happened to be the right timing, like we said, because the film festival, yeah. the Sight and Sound started up. All of us wanted to do projects. All of a sudden, everybody wanted want to work on this. Everybody knew knew at some level who Michelle Cerros was. Mm -hmm. And so whether it was Naomi who had heard it, you know, from another place, and, or some students who were doing um, research on her at Chan Islands University, it all just kind of like came together at the right time. Okay. And yeah, and, and so then also I wanted to just acknowledge the, the museums, because they really, yeah. gotten into Ventura. it. Ventura. Ventura Museum, Museum yeah. Carnegie, yeah. Um, and then uh, China Islands University, like I mentioned. I think we're going to try to show it at Rio Mesa also. Mm -hmm. Basically all the areas that, that basically were her stomping grounds. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And there was a, another a director that did a short on her, yes. one of her stories, Lucy Rodriguez, mm -hmm. uh, did a great short film that got uh, honored at the Ventura Museum, I believe it was 2015. Okay. I remember uh, that. As a, the short Latino shorts. I think it was, it was the first festival, and yeah. I'm not sure if it keeps going. Um, possibly, uh, but we'll have to revive it. Yeah. Right, and well, it, it well, was a great, it was a great short, and great uh, that could be also something you might want to look at. Yeah, definitely. The viewers, job. if they want more information, they'll go to the Facebook page, yes, and absolutely. Uh, they can. or maybe RC will start it up. Again. <laughs> 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 yes. Um, I have two minutes left on our show, okay. and I wanted to touch on. The bilingualism, the fact that she, you yes. mentioned she was not bilingual. Correct. Can yeah, yeah. So right before she was graduating, she was missing her foreign language units. So she went to Mexico to study Spanish for, I believe, a month or two. Mm -hmm. And another great story came out of that. Uh, you can read her books mm -hmm. and find out which story that one is. But in, I, can, I can probably speak to the fact that we come from the same generation where our parents didn't want us to speak Spanish mm -hmm. because of the uh, negative impact of having an accent, mm -hmm. right? Or our parents were already shunned for speaking Spanish. Yeah. So yeah. for us, we had to learn it mm -hmm. in college, in mm -hmm. high school. Um, and so playing the field on both sides, she was great at 
right? To the Mexicans, we are American. To yeah. the Americans, mm -hmm. we are Mexicans. We are so, both yeah. and we are neither. Yeah. Where do we sit? Mm -hmm. And she was great with her writing in Attention Shoppers, yeah, which is probably a favorite, um, which would be a great short as well. Um, she was just a master mm -hmm. at playing the bilingual sides of both aspects. And you said she, in that aspect, she, we have one more minute left, but um, she changed everything for the rest of us. Yeah, well, uh, mm -hmm. like I said, she kind of like modernized the, the way we, we kind of looked at each other. Mm -hmm. um, like, well, once again, like, you know how the Generation X was all about that? It was all about kind of like retaking our identity after the whole 80s, Reaganomics, everything was just like a mess. Yeah. And so she helped, helped like just completely make make one hip again, if you want to say back then. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, more than anything, also, this was before social media, this was before information could be spread out. So you literally had to do footwork. You had to, like they mentioned, sell your, your, your zine out of your trunk. Yeah. You had to like literally go places so they could like find you and, and speak at like um, pub, uh, book, book reading. So she was, she was definitely a pioneer and like will always, you know, be inspired by that. And yeah. we're, we're hoping that the next generations really, you know, pick up on that and get inspired also. Definitely. I want to thank you all for coming today and sharing. Just, I feel like not even a, a sliver, not even a percentage. It's just so little of who she was. Uh, but I hope that it's enticed everybody who's watching to go find her work, go to the museums, go see the short film. Very soon, Great Aunt Linda is going to die. I know this because she's shown me how to care for her good china. Told me where she keeps her grandma's wedding ring and put the pink slip to Uncle Willie's Buick in my name. Just in case, she says. Great Aunt Linda, Great Uncle Willie, and Warlord will be ready and awake, waiting to welcome me.